What is up guys, Jack here, and today I'm going to be bringing you my top 15 iOS 7.1.2 Cydia tweaks. So this will obviously work on pretty much every single iOS 7 firmware, but these are the top 15 that I've found, and basically that I use on a daily basis, that work on the latest iOS 7.1.2, as a lot of tweaks haven't actually been updated. So this is basically just going to be a what is on my jailbroken iPhone video. Uh, I'm just going to be coming at you. I am running iOS 7.1.2. This is on an iPhone 4. Uh, some of you may have seen the video explaining, or I may have told you why I had to sell my iPhone 5. Basically it broke, uh, and I bought an iPhone 4, and it's actually running very well. I'm surprised it can handle jailbreak, uh, jailbro jailbreaking very well. I've not had any lag or anything, and I'm very surprised it's actually holding up very, very well. So basically the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to cover the one tweak which isn't in the settings, as you know all the tweak, a lot of your tweaks go into your settings panel, the one tweak which isn't in there is called eye cleaner, so I'm going to cover that first and then we'll just go in through in order in the settings panel. So basically eye cleaner is basically, some of you may have system mechanic on your Windows PC or something similar to that, which allows you to delete um, a lot of unused files and basically clear up your device. So as you can see with this, you can actually just clear up your device, you can clear uh, cache files, temporary files which are always a pain and use up a lot of memory uh, and basically if you've got a, a, a limited amount of memory left for example say you're on an 8 gigabyte device which you don't have a lot of memory and you use a lot of that memory up with music or something like that uh, then you can just delete everything you don't need so something like this message attachments I have it on smart and basically it, it explains all the different things if I just go into smart there you see the clear up uh, or delete files smart only deletes the files which um, do not show up in any messages say so you've deleted the message but it will still have the message attachment on there then that's why I have smart on so basically you're not gonna you think that you've deleted the attachment but it's actually still on your device so they can just delete it like that and you can delete obviously um, it's got all the ones that you don't recommend like Cydia sources you don't want them all cleaned up because it will actually delete some of your preferences and different things like that but just temporary files and basically you just click clean at the top there uh, and if we just uh, cut, cut ahead to when it's finished, we're done now. It just brings up an advert, just X out of that, and it tell you what it's done. So you can see cleanup completed. It's actually freed up 89.59 uh, megabytes of data. I'm just going to respring this now, as you have to. Uh, but it actually cleared up, deleted over 1,400 files. But when I did this yesterday, it actually saved, actually um, found over 500 megabytes of um, space for me. So it's definitely worth doing every now and then. So basically if we just head into settings now, then what I'm going to do is just go through with all the tweaks in order that are in the settings panel. Uh, and so this is going to bring up the next load of tweaks. So the first one we have is Activator. And this is a very well known tweak, it's probably one of the oldest out there now. And basically a lot of you may think, oh it's just a boring tweak, only really used for SP settings which isn't used now. But you're completely wrong to be honest. Uh, this has so much potential and just really no one uses it to its full potential. Uh, for example, um, some of the most common things to use it for, as I said, was SB settings. But you can actually like completely invoke like um, messages from this. So if I just have uh, shake and bake, at the moment I've got it to activate switcher. So if I just do that, as you can see it brings up a switcher here, and I do have another tweak installed, which obviously I'll cover later, which will show you how to get this switcher. But the reason I have this is because this device actually has a bit of a dodgy home button. Um, so if I just bring up um, the volume here and just click that, you can see I now go home, and that is all done with Activator, so if I find that the home button isn't working, I can just have sort of a backup way of doing things. So there's so much you can do with this, so if I just go on anywhere here, and if we just click on, uh, if we just find something like the status bar, and we're just... Um, set it to something simple so you can just see some of the different things that you can do with this and it's definitely something worth downloading now I will just know if you're going to do this on um, your iOS 7.1.2 device sorry you will need to get the R uh, the Ryan Petrich beta repo um, which I will have in the description down below which basically you get a developer sort of a beta version of Activator um, so which is still working all fine but it's the only way you can get something that works on 7.1.2 and you may have to sort of reinstall Substrate a couple of times to get it to work just perfect but if we just double tap on the status bar now so if we just set it to um, I don't know something just like if we can compose Facebook post and if we just head back um, to a home screen here, as you can see the home button didn't work then so just use the method that I use and we double tap on the status bar if we can just get it there I, and as you can see we bring up the Facebook um, sort of posting thing I don't have a Facebook account linked as I just find it's a bit useless, a bit pointless but you can see that if you're uh, keen on posting to Facebook or tweeting or something like that you can set it to something such as double tap the status bar and quickly just compose a new status or tweet 
So next up we have Alkaline or Alkaline and basically this is a theming um, sort of engine for your battery status up in the top of your status bar. So as you can see up the top right there I've actually got a slightly different um, logo for what my battery looks like and you can download a whole load of ones within the city. I haven't really used this to its full potential but I just like these sort of stock ones it comes with. This is the free it comes with and say you want it to match your signals there you can just click spot and then you just have to go ahead and um, respring so you just respring up the top there as you can see we've just resprung now and if you if you look up on the top right my battery now looks very similar to the signal bars uh, and it's something if you like sort of a parallel a mirror image then you've got a different battery theming but anyway that's alkaline and it basically just allows you to theme what your battery looks like on your status bar so next up we have App ETA, and basically this just allows you to check how long it's going to take you to download an application. So if we just head into the App Store now and just download a free application, sort of the top charts one, uh, just something from the top there. Uh, and it basically gives you a percentage and how long it's going to take you to download something. So this is very useful. And I can't, someone just explain to you what the hell is Meow Chat? Because I've had so many notifications about this. If someone can comment down below saying what the hell that is, that would be very, very useful. <laughs> but anyway, so we just download something very simple here. Um, just like um, Clash of Cards. That sounds slightly interesting. So as you can see, it's now downloading, um, or at least it will start to download. And you see you now have a percentage bar showing you how long it's going to, how well, how much it's progressed downloading. But if we just start downloading this, if we just double tap on the app here, you can see that you bring up sort of a. Um, a, a menu telling you all about it. So you can see um, it, it's sort of telling you the size of the application, uh, how long it's going to take, uh, the percentage of the developer. Obviously, if you wait a bit longer, I haven't, it hasn't even started downloading yet. But if you wait a bit longer, it'll tell you more about it. But it's definitely a nice little uh, tweak and something which is very useful, especially for someone like me who has a very bad internet connection. So next up, we have Orxo 2. So I'm sure a lot of you are aware of the tweak Orxo, which was very um, popular on iOS 6. And this is its iOS 7 version. Now, I I actually only use this for the hot corners, so as you can see you get um, sort of a quick, you can uh, access your switcher very quickly um, from doing just uh, swiping up in the left corner, and if I swipe up in the right corner here, if I can just do it here, you can see you go back to the home screen, so this also ties in with the fact I've got a slightly dodgy home button, but if I just enable the actual switcher here, so you can just see it, if we just enable multi switcher and quick switcher, so you can see what this tweak is all about. Uh, and we just basically swipe up at the bottom here. You see we actually load it into a multitasking and a um, your control center. You've got your control center at the top and the bottom. It's also compatible with other tweaks. You can see I've got different toggles at the top there, which obviously is another tweak I'll talk about slightly later. But uh, as this is basically what Orxo is all about, and if you just swipe up on that one, you can close all of your applications just like that and tap back to go to home. Very, very nice tweak and it's very well polished. I don't use the whole uh, switcher as you saw earlier. I have a slightly different switcher um, but yeah also too is very very nice and something which I just like the hot corners so you can just swipe up at the bottom here and go straight back to your home screen definitely nice if you have a dodgy home button like me or something like that so next up we have better NC7 and this just basically gives a whole load of customization for your notification center if I just scroll down here you can see that we now have uh, no separators really um, and it's I if you actually look at the top here I'm at the top of my notification center and I have none of those useless sections such as today or and missed because to be quite honest missed is just all your notifications to be honest and the today tab was completely pointless in my opinion so I've just disabled them so you just go to um, you, all the green ones obviously the ones are disabled like the, the Yahoo logo obviously Apple have got that for copyright laws but for me that's completely useless you can hide the X if you want uh, obviously I need that to delete the notifications I don't want though you can have clear instead of just having the X so you some of you may know if you click on the X it will then cut with a clear you can just have clear instead of X then I've got hide today tab hide all tab and hide missed if you hide the all tab as well obviously you're not going to have uh, any notifications and you have a whole load of different options um, and then the preview lines that's something i like so i've actually got it set to less so i can sh see more notifications in uh without having to scroll you have it right down to one i just got two lines so you actually get like two lines of a message or something like that and you can have right up to 20 if you want to if you get a lot of um sort of long length messages or something like that but that's better nc7 so next up we have blur enabler and basically this just adds blur to your device so some of you may know if you're on an older device like me the notification center is just a black color by standard but we just head back to the home screen here um, and I'll just show you, um, basically, it, it gives just basically the blur effect. You can see now you've got a blurred background, and it's all blurring just like your home screen, uh, and it's very, very nice. It's definitely um, just, I like how it looks in iOS 7, and I'm slightly annoyed that on the older devices you just have sort of the black uh, colour. 
So that's basically Blur Enabler. That's what all it does. It also um, blurs your notifications when you get them. Um, and I've got adaptive colors. So say the application is a blue color, you actually get sort of a blue tinge to the um, notification. So coming up next, we have CC settings. And this just allows you to have um, different toggles up at the top there. So you can see I've now got a home one there. Again, ties in with the fact my home button's slightly dodgy. So I've got a whole lot of different ways that I can get back to the home screen if I need to. I also have my cellular data, so I want to turn that on. I also have my Wi-Fi toggle, my do not disturb and the lock um, rotation which are obviously they're all the standard ones but I just change those two up there and basically you can just choose to have six per line or four per line you don't have to respring but it sometimes does take a sort of amount of time to sort of sort itself out and just um, actually do what you're asking it to do uh, but then when it actually does it you can just scroll between the two so say you can uh, have a load of different toggles um, then you can just scroll between the lot of them so we just uh, choose the setting toggles and see these are all of the different toggles you can have I've got all of these do not include and just got these five ones here as I find they're the ones I use but you can have a whole load of different ones um, and basically just have whatever you need so next up we have colour keyboard and I don't find myself using this a whole load as I quite like the stock iOS 7 keyboard Basically, this is uh, color keyboard was always a very popular tweak, and I find it worked a lot better on iOS 6. Definitely a nicer experience. But you can just change the color of your keyboard. So, say you want a black and orange keyboard, you can just click on the eye sort of information there, and it'll bring up a screenshot of what the keyboard looks like. As you can see, it looks very, very interesting. Much different to the standard one. And then you can just save it by clicking the save at the top there, and that will be your coloured keyboard. You can customise the background as well, so you can actually have a different background to the to the, your keyboard. Say you want to have one of your wallpapers as your keyboard, you can actually just do that. And definitely something which is adds a lot of customization and something which you can show to your mates and say, yes, I am jailbroken, as you can see. So here we have Grid Switcher. So this is basically what I said earlier, uh, when I have sort of the um, cards in here. I had four in there earlier, as you can see it worked perfectly then. So basically I had the layout of 2 by 2 which means you have two at the top and two at the bottom. You can have up to three by three, which works better on an iPhone 5, or something with the bigger screens, obviously the 5S or the iPad Touch 5. And you can have four by four, which doesn't look that great. Um, it doesn't lose all of the screen real estate. So this basically just allows you to view more of your open applications at once uh, and just delete them much quicker and just uh, get to a uh, more open application much quicker. But anyway, that's Grid Switcher and definitely a nice alternative to the standard app switcher. So next up we have Mobius. Uh, and if you're going to search this in Cydia, you will have to sort of install the repo. I'll have all of the repos if there are any. Basically, I have all the tweak names down below in the description. A repo if there's next to them. And if I have a separate video explaining them, I'll also have that video. But this is Mobius. It has the umlaut uh, instead of just a standard O. So that's why you're going to have to actually go into the sort of the repo to find this. But basically, this just allows you to constantly scroll through your pages as you can see I've only got two pages but I'm constantly scrolling through all of them and it's definitely a nice little thing again due to the fact I don't have a fully working home button it just allows me to scroll through them all without having to click the home button to get back to the main one and obviously it works a bit better if you have more pages but for me I just think it, it works well and allows me to just get to my pages much quicker uh, that's pretty much all the options you have with that you have sort of the scrolling snap so if you don't have that on it just constantly scrolls until sort of the momentum stops and then you can just choose the pages um, it obviously works and it also works within folders so coming up next we have no slow animations and basically as I said my device runs very well that's also due to this tweak uh, and basically this just speeds up all the animations so if I open a folder you see there's no slow animation to it hence the name and it just works very well especially on a device such as this you see I've got it on the fastest setting here you can have it on the slowest setting if you would like but definitely a tweak which is worth checking out especially if you're on an older device such as the iPhone 4 like I am so here we have slices, and this is definitely something which is very interesting, especially if you have multiple social accounts. For example, I have two Instagram accounts. I sort of run a sort of Instagram page for classic cars. Uh, so definitely follow that if you're interested. It's Classics United. I'll have a link in the description down to that. But anyway, I have my personal account, which is also obviously the account that you guys can follow me on if you want to see more like stuff like that. And I obviously have that other account. So if I want to open up my account, I just click on the one I've got the save name as Jack, and then it will load into it. So it is is a sort of a bit tetchy and a bit slow on this device uh, but it definitely works well still so you can just scroll through it all and see all of your different um, posts from the people you follow and if you head back out open it again you can see you come up with the menu again you click on classics united 
uh, and as you can see you get, I'm loaded straight into it. it does take a short amount of time to open it up as you can see now this is a different account I don't have all the posts that were on the other one and then I'm just on my uh, other profile here so this is a very nice little tweak if you have say two Twitter accounts or something like that uh, it definitely works very well and you just tap on that and you can have a new slice as well say you have more accounts you just have the option of setting up loads and you have loads of different applications you can set um, as you can set it sometimes is a bit tetchy but it works just fine for me I've never had really any real issues with it and it's definitely something which is worth checking out if you have multiple social accounts so these are all the different applications which are um, compatible obviously every single app on your device is compatible um, but obviously some apps you're not going to want to use it on such as over and something like that but definitely something worth checking out so here we have spring to Mice free and I have made a video talking about this and basically for a lot of people this is one of the only city tweaks that some people will need it gives so much um, customization for example control center this is how I'm able to not have um, if I can just actually invoke it here, as you can see, I've got the nine of the quick launch at the bottom there. So that's how I use how I've done that is just by uh, using Spring to Mize free. So it's a very nice Cydia tweak, something which I would really recommend. It gives so much customization. For example, the control center, as I said, I've got hide airdrop, I've got hide quick launch. Uh, then the app slider, if I had the custom, if I had the original one, I'm sorry, you can choose the size of the pages, and it's just so much customization in here. I really do love it. It's a tweak which you can just play around with if you get bored of how your device is looking. You can just go into this, literally spend five minutes tweaking some things around, and completely change the look of your device. For example, the icons, you can just um, choose sort of the badges get rid of the badges you can also choose the, to have icon labels if you don't want to uh, and you can also just choose these sort of the sizes of the icons if you go on the pages as you can see I've got no spotlight as I just find it's very annoying uh, it's sort of you're just swiping your device through your home screen and if you don't swipe quite right enough you swipe down by accident you don't invoke that spotlight and it's really not very nice to have I don't even use spotlight anyway but as you see you've got the icon settings you can choose the size of the icons and so much customization in here it's just definitely sort of worth checking out so last but by no means least we have Zeppelin and this is one of my most favourite tweaks, something which just adds a little bit of customization, but it's something which is very noticeable. As you can see up in the top there, instead of my carrier logo, I've actually got a VW logo and this is basically due to just Zeppelin. You just download it and I've actually got a cars um pack installed here so you can just download different themes from Cydia but this is all the different cars and it's on the fly update so if I just want to change it to the Jaguar one and just head back you can see it's now changed to the Jaguar one uh, so you get all pretty much all the custom ones all the ones which don't say cars next to them you get when you install it and it's just definitely something which just adds a little bit of customization to your device and I really really like it Anyway, that's been my top 15 Cydia tweaks for your iOS 7.1.2 device and pretty much any iOS 7 device. If you've enjoyed this video, then definitely hit that like button. If you're new here, subscribe. I'm going to be doing tons more jailbreak videos as I find there's something which I really enjoy making and sharing with you guys the tweaks that I use on a daily basis. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.